John chapter 1 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 2. The same was in the beginning with God. 3. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. 4. In Him was life, and the life was the light of humans. 5. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness understood it not, since it was published in 2012, Mind and Cosmos, by the philosopher Thomas Nagel, is a book that has caused some consternation, with his taunting subtitle, Why the Materialist Neo-Darwinian Conception of Nature is Almost Certainly False. Dr. Nagel was rejecting the idea that there is nothing more to the universe than matter and physical forces. He also doubted that the laws of evolution, as currently conceived, could have produced something as remarkable as sentient life. That idea borders on anathema, and the book quickly met with a blistering counterattack. Steven Pinker, a Harvard psychologist, denounced it as a shoddy reasoning of a once great thinker. Dr. Nagel is an atheist who rejects the creationist idea of an intelligent designer. The answers, he believes, may still be found through science, but only by expanding it further than it may be willing to go. Humans are addicted to the hope for a final reckoning, he wrote, but intellectual humility requires that we resist the temptation to assume that the tools of the kind we now have are in principle sufficient to understand the universe as a whole, whatever that means. Dr. Nagel finds it astonishing that the human brain, this biological organ that evolved on the third rock from the sun, has developed a science and a mathematics so in tune with the cosmos that it can predict and explain so many things. Neuroscientists assume that these mental powers somehow emerge from the electrical signaling of neurons, the circuitry of the brain, but no one has come close to explaining how that occurs. That, Dr. Nagel proposes, might require another revolution showing that mind along with matter and energy is a fundamental principle of nature that we live in a universe primed to generate beings capable of comprehending it, rather than being a blind series of random mutations and adaptations. Evolution would have a direction, maybe even a purpose. Above all, he wrote, I would like to extend the boundaries of what is now regarded as unthinkable in light of how little we really understand about the world. Dr. Nagel is not alone in entertaining such ideas. While rejecting anything mystical, the biologist Stuart Kaufman has suggested that Darwinian theory must somehow be expanded to explain the emergence of complex, intelligent creatures. And David J. Chalmers, a philosopher, has called on scientists to seriously consider panpsychism, the idea that some kind of consciousness, however rudimentary, pervades the stuff of the universe. Some of this is a matter of scientific taste. It can be just as exhilarating as Stephen J. Gould proposed in Wonderful Life to consider the conscious mind as simply a fluke, no more inevitable than the human appendix or a starfish's five legs. But it doesn't seem so crazy to consider alternative explanations. Heading off in another direction, a new book by the physicist Max Tegmark suggests that a different ingredient Mathematics needs to be omitted into science as one of nature's irreducible parts. In fact, he believes, it may be the most fundamental of all. In a well-known 1960 essay, the physicist Eugene Wigner marveled at the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in explaining the world. It is something bordering on the mysterious, he wrote, for which there is no rational explanation. The best he could offer was that mathematics is a wonderful gift which we neither understand nor deserve. Dr. Tegmark in his new book, Our Mathematical Universe, My Quest for the Ultimate Nature of Reality, turns the idea on its head. The reason mathematics serves as such a forceful tool is that the universe is 
a mathematical structure. He sets out to show how matter, energy, space, and time might emerge from numbers. In other words, everything is numbered and everything is connected. But is mathematics, for all its power, really the root of reality, or is it a product of the human mind? Reviewing Dr. Tegmark's book in the New York Times Book Review, the mathematician Edward Frankel, noted that only a small part of the vast ocean of mathematics, appears to describe the real world. The rest seems to be about nothing other than itself. That purity is part of its appeal. Here on this planet, during the 5,000 orbits since people began leaving marks on papyrus or clay, we've come far in describing the vast beyond or at least it seems that way, but maybe decades or millenniums from now, here are some place yet to be imagined. Science on Earth, circa 2014, will look like nothing more than a good start. Again, everything is numbered and everything is connected. Genesis Chapter 1 In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 3. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 4. And God saw the light, but it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. 7. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. 10. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good.